Okay, I, I guess we are going to start. I think 10 minutes has been fashionably late, so we are fashionable. This panel um, is about a subject which I feel is quite important, uh, about the future of Wikimania. This was never discussed in past Wiki Wikimanias, so we are the first year in discussing it. I think after eight years, about time, somebody decides to discuss it. So let's start with a b very busy program ahead of us. First question, what is Wikimania? When you don't know something, you go to Wikipedia to read about it. So Wikipedia says that Wikimania is the annual conference of wiki projects and the Wikimedia Foundation. Then there is a list. Most of my lecture is based off these articles and therefore the contributors to this article are at fault. One of the things that the articles does not mention, and I think it is important, that the official um, food of Wikimania is the Struwwaffel. Something important to know. It's, oh, oh, it's also the official food of the chapter, I'm told. So you can seek people who has it in the crowd, and if you find them, you are lucky. Um, so what is Wikimania? If we, oh, first of all, this is Wikimania. So if you did not intend to be here, you're at the wrong place. Uh, you're welcome to stay. There's not many people in the crowd. Um, but in order to look at the future of Wikimania, we need to look a bit at the past in order to understand it better. The first Wikimania was in Frankfurt between the 4th August and 8th August 2005. Um, the place, the location was chosen between several uh, cities. A dozen cities uh, bidded to participate in Frankfurt um, and the city was finally chosen. Uh, there was a second stage to the bidding and Frankfurt was chosen over Dublin and Rotterdam. It had a hackathon to hacking days attended by 25 participants. Um, and there was an opening keynote by Jimmy Wales. We already see that some traditions that, we are, that have been taking place since then, all for the years started there and nothing new about it. There were other keynotes among which was Ward Cunningham, Richard Stallman and Ross Mayfield. And there were four parallel tracks and workshops, a total of five parallel tracks. Um, next one was in Cambridge, Massachusetts. A year later, it was chosen uh, over, it was attended by 400 attendees and was chosen over London, Milan, Boston, and uh, London, Milan, and Toronto. Only Toronto and Boston reached the second stage of the bidding. It had a total of six tracks four discussion tracks, uh, four lecture tracks, a discussion tracks, and a workshop track. Um, Jimmy Wales was again the keynote speaker. Amongst which, uh, there was also Lawrence Lessing, uh, Brewster Karl, Yochai Benkler, Mitch Kapoor, Ward Cunningham, and David Weinberger. Third, Ukimania, first one in Asia, took place in 2007 in Taipei. And um, again, several cities participated in the bid. Uh, Taipei won, again, a short list of London, Alexandria, and Turin. One of the bidding cities that didn't get to the short list was Hong Kong, Singapore, Istanbul, and Orlando. We will see that several cities have bid several times before actually winning to host the contents, which shows that if at first you don't succeed, you should try again. So Hong Kong first bidded in 2006. 2007. About 440 attendees attended. Half of them were from Taiwan, from the local country. And that was the first time a wiki chicks lunch took place. Um, this is a picture by Kat Walsh titled, A Moment of Alarm in Jimmy's opening speech when he realized that all the developers are in the conference and nobody is home keeping an eye on the website. Kat, Walsh, Kat Walsh's title. I didn't choose the title. Next year, the uh, Library of Alexandria, the renovated Bibliotheca Alexandria, reopened after 2000 years, hosted the event. Um, first time it is in the Middle East, actually also first time in Africa, and last time in Africa since then. Um, cities bidding to host the conference that year were uh, Atlanta and Cape Town for the final stage of the bidding, but London and Toronto also submitted bids. I think this is the second time London submitted a field and didn't get, no, 
this year was the second time and didn't get to the final stage. Uh, this conference was very controversial. Uh, the community was much against Alexandria winning the bid in view of the government of Egypt uh, um, censorships and of, uh, of bloggers during the Mubarak era. And there were many concerns regarding LGBT rights for attendees to the conference. There was also suggestion to boycott the conference. Um, but it was a very successful conference. I'm putting a picture of Jimmy in a funny outsuit or position in any, every conference slide. Uh, next year, Buenos Aires in Argentina, first time in South America, and since then, last time in South America, about 560 attendees. Um, I heard there was a dance ball where people tangoed at the end of the conference. I could not find any pictures in the comments of that party. And I searched very hard. I, I didn't find, I didn't find up any pictures. <laughs> yeah. Um, Buenos Aires was chosen over Toronto, Brisbane, and Karlsruhe. And um, next year, the conference took place in Gdansk in Poland at the Polish Baltic Philharmonic, a great venue. That year, Amsterdam and Oxford were the bidding cities at the final stage of the bidding and who didn't succeed. Um, as it was the Philharmonica, it was the first time that a concert was played for the attendees of Wikimania who clapped their hands at all the wrong places to the amazement of the players. Um, it was the 10th anniversary, anniversary of the death of an accomplished Polish composer, Vlanislav Spielban, and it was a very good concert. Um, we also saw the premiere of the film Truths in Numbers, a documentary about Wikipedia, which was supposed to be very controversial, but I think most attendees actually enjoyed it. Next year, Wikimania took place in Haifa, in Israel, not the, one of the main cities. Personally, I think this was the most stressful Wik Wikimania. <laughs> um, keynote speaker were Yochai Benkler, this is, was his second time, and Joseph Riegel. Um, we also had the, the head of the Knesset Science and Technology Committee um, start the conference. It was the first conference with a big Wikimania sign. This is about 20 meters tall. It was attended by 720 Wikimedians from 35 uh, different countries, some of, the, of which without diplomatic relationships with Israel, which was quite amazing to get visas for all of them. It was the first Wikimania with street signs, big street signs showing the way. The first one with a stamp, an official stamp that was issued that day, so Wikimania's uh, attendees could go to the post office and get letters stamped with that stamp. Uh, this is just a cool picture of the Wikichix lunch, attended by over 40 Wikichix. Uh, there was a student party with beer and sausages and not much vegetarian food and uh, an Israeli rock dance party. These are actually Wikipedians dancing, quite uh, unbelievable. There were four tours to different parts of the country, in Haifa, Jerusalem, Nazareth, and Akko. Four of the, t Jerusalem tour was 250 people, so it was actually five different tours which changed routes and tracks and met at uh, different points. Uh, 250 people talking, walking in a very small area, very crowded, and nobody got lost, amazingly. There was a beach party. Most of the foundation staff got drunk. <laughs> and I also, I mean, most of the people got drunk. <laughs> okay, next year, DC. The biggest Wikimania ever. 1,400 attendees. Most of them you see in this picture. It was uh, in collaboration with the United States Department of State, who did a, a parallel track called Tech and State. Uh, the conference focused on the involvement of women, the, the Wikimedia conference, involvement of weekend, women in the Wikipedia movement. And it has the first cocktail, where everybody who had to dress formally and to see everybody in suit and ties was quite amazing. The venue itself was even more amazing, the Library of Congress. The building from inside is great, but the view, what can I say? Only this year topped the view of last year. Well, really. 
Hong Kong, I understand there were seven, 700 attendees registered this year. 600 of them actually paid the fees to enter the conference. Um, but this year already broke a record of more than 350 volunteers, which is more than the previous four years altogether, which is quite amazing. Um, next year, London. I had a preview of the venue. I can tell you in advance it is amazing. I need a picture of Jimmy, so I found one for, for next year. And I have no idea who the keynotes will be next year. <laughs> Um, we see the global distribution of two in East Asia, two in the Middle East, three in Europe, two in North America, and one in South America. So far, zero for Australia, and we, if we are looking at the Middle East as a region, then it means zero for Africa. Part of the goals of doing Wikimania in different areas to enable people from different countries to attend at lower cost, we are, not, we are trying to do a good distribution, but we are not doing that well as we can see. The number of attendees has increased over the years with a peak last year in Washington. This year we are about the same as Haifa, I'm guessing. I don't have the final numbers and probably we cannot have the final number until the end of the conference because people are keep coming. One of the things that is discussed again and again every year is the number of tracks that there should be. This is important because the less tracks you have, the bigger rooms you would need. And if the, concert, con the conference keeps growing, we would need a room like this for all the tracks. So we might consider a different number of tracks. But what we can see that even though this argument goes again and again every year in the program committee and in the local team, basically we have the same number of tracks since the beginning. So I didn't know this until we start started doing this presentation and it's uh, worth of many hours, hours of arguing for the past three years. Um, so, but I do think the more the conference would go, we would need more parallel tracks. Uh, the bars are tracks, discussions, and uh, tracks, workshops, and discussions. So we had um, five tracks, for example, in Buenos Aires. Haifa had four tracks and one uh, workshop tracks. Um, only three had discussion tracks. Um, another thing that's should be discussed, and I understand has never been discussed before, is the question of budget. I have asked the permission of James from Washington to show his budget and the foundation. The budget of Wikimania is comprised of three elements, actually two elements because one of them doesn't really count. Um, the, the first is the foundation money, a fixed amount given by the foundation to the local team, which should, in my opinion, cover the basic cost of the conference. If nothing else is raised, this should be enough to do the conference. That's the first amount. In Haifa, we are talking about $105,000 out of a total budget of uh, $217,000, which means, an, uh, I'm sorry, one uh, and 217 was raised by other sponsors, which means a total of 317. Am I right, Itzik? Yes. DC received from the foundation what I, I gather a number of $335,000 from the Wikimedia Foundation, $50,000 from other chapters as sponsors, and the remaining amount from sponsors outside the movement. Um, I don't have the, the numbers for this year or previous years. As I said, the budget for uh, Wikimania is comprised of these three elements, chapters money, foundation money, and other sponsors. When we are Talking about this, we need to take into account that the foundation actually spends much more money into the conference because above the amount that is spent for the conference itself, there is an amount for scholarships, a different budget set aside to pay for all the scholarships, and a third amount is for all the foundation personnel who comes to attend the conference. So basically, when we are talking about a, a certain amount of money, it is triple the amount, the actual cost to the foundation. The conference budget itself is of three parts, the foundation money, other chapters, and the local chapter money. To the best of my knowledge, the local chapter hardly ever contributes to the conference if there is a local chapter. And one of the questions that should be asked is, do you need a local chapter to do the conference, or should the conference be a facilitator to create a local chapter where it, there is none? And the third amount, part of the budget, is the outside sponsors. Now, in the panel, we are going to try and answer these questions about the future. 
Um, it will be later on, so you can read it, and the panelists also. But first, I want to invite Sugarna from the foundation to give the foundation's view of the conference, please. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> what? Okay. That would work. What are you going to put up there? Just the opening. <laughs> that's some pretty picture. Some pretty picture. <laughs> that one. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I thank you, Dror, because that was actually really interesting. And I think that, that that's the first time, certainly, that I've seen a, both the story of every Wikimania but also um, data pulled together from every Wikimania. So that was actually a really interesting overview, and I thought new things while you presented that. Um, I'm going to fix this again. So, uh, I, I, so what Dror has pulled together here, as I understand it, is a group of people who have been working on Wikimania either as probably the lead conference organizer for a number of the years of Wikimania, um, and then also some people who've worked persistently, consistently on Wikimania over the years, such as James Forrester, right? I, of those people, will be the least well-informed um, <laughs> to make pronouncements about the future of Wikimania. So I will just restrict myself to, uh, to some sort of minimal um, comments from the perspective of the Wikimedia Foundation. So I'll start by saying, um, and I assume that everyone here knows this, but in the event that you don't, Wikimania is a community um, conference first and foremost, right? I used to uh, bring, we used to bring, the Wikimedia Foundation would sometimes bring special guests to Wikimania in prior years. Um, not advisor board members, they've always come, but sort of external people who are interested in Wikimania, in, in the Wikimedia movement. And they would often assume that it was my conference. And it's very much not my conference. It's not the Wikimedia Foundation's conference. And so my um, ability to have opinions about the direction that it should take is necessarily tempered and influenced by that because it wants to be the conference that the community wants and needs for itself. Um, having said that, the Wikimedia Foundation is very, very pleased um, to support Wikimania. And we do support Wikimania, and I like to think that one of the key things that the Wikimedia Foundation is able to offer is some measure of um, insurance or stability or predictability. Many times the local planning team um, wants to raise a certain amount of money for itself um, through sponsorships. We consider the Wikimedia Foundation, we consider ourselves to be a bit of an insurance policy for the local team so that if they don't make the money that they're hoping and anticipating and wanting to make, we will create a fallback for them. They're going to be okay. They're not going to take on an enormous amount of financial risk because we're going to be a buffer um, for them against that risk. And I think similarly, as the conference planners do their work, often they're finding that venues or lodging um, needs guarantees that the money will be there for them, and sometimes there's a gap between the securing of sponsorships and the actual money coming in the door. Sometimes the, the, the venue, for example, will want the money before it is available. Again, that's an easy way for the Wikimedia Foundation to help the conference is by closing that gap, writing the check so that venues can be secured and lodgings can be secured. Um, the one... The one thing, so, so the Wikimedia Foundation interacts with Wikimania in a number of ways, and, and the one thing that I think um, I would like to say here that maybe is a bit of a topic for conversation as we get into the panel um, is that uh, I feel, and I think that a number of people, I, I've been to seven Wikimanias, I think a number of people who've been to multiple Wikimanias have felt for a while a kind of unarticulated or semi-articulated um, desire to have more um, multi-year support for Wikimania as opposed to simply the in-year support. There's been a lot of informal um, coaching and hand-holding and guiding and helping. Um, I think I understand that the team that put on Wikimania in a given year always partners up with and helps the next year's team, right? I think that's been a convention, ordinarily, that's been a convention for a while. And I think that's been helpful to the planners. It's also conventional for the planners to attend the Wikimania prior to their own, even if they haven't come to all of them. And I know that there's lots of informal back and forth. 
my understanding is that there's a group, Phoebe, SJ, James Forrester, and some other folks are proposing or are wanting to propose that there be set up a standing committee of Wikimania people year over year again to provide some kind of guidance, the hard earned experience of years so that people don't have to make the same mistakes that their predecessors painfully made, um, but can instead um, learn from what happened before they did. Um, I'm hopeful that that happens. I support that. I think that's a great idea. I think it's been wanted for a while and just for a variety of reasons hasn't gotten off the ground. I hope it can get off the ground. If it does, um, the Wikimedia Foundation would be absolutely delighted to attach a person, a resource from the Wikimedia Foundation to aid in that endeavor of making sure that there's some support and consistency and lessons learned available to planning teams as they do their work. So. I don't think, I think I would like to see the stage of the next person, um, again, who will probably be much more <laughs> Wikimania informed than I am. Thank you. Actually, it was a, this was a great talk. That's, it was a great talk. You, you made me think of several new questions for the panel, <laughs> which will appear later for the unprepared panel who learned these questions. Before we continue with the panel, I want to sh show you two case studies how this panel affected, badly or goodly, the chapter involved in uh, uh, doing this Wikimania. So first I'm going to invite Itzik Edri from Israel, who's one of the key organizers of Wikimania in Haifa, and now the chairperson of Wikimedia Israel. Yeah. Using the presentation, I can see it on the computer. Okay. So hi, my name is Itzik. I'm now the chairman and the spokesperson of uh, Wikimedia Israel. So Wikimedia uh, in Haifa in numbers. I'm not going to repeat the number as Dora already said them, uh, but number of participants, 726, uh, support by the foundation. We didn't got support from the chapters and we didn't ask for money from the chapter as we believe that we need to raise the money by ourselves and not taking more money from the donors' uh, money of the movement. So what we learn? First of all, it's how to live without a life for six months. Uh, it's really, really hard to organize Wikimedia and everyone that participates in some stage of uh, organized Wikimedia know that it's taken a lot of you, uh, especially if you're a volunteer, especially if you have a workplace, if you have a family and if you want to enjoy a little bit from the unknown world that call life. We learn about, uh, a lot about our uh, chapter members, uh, who are uh, the leaders, who are the ones that can really do things, who are the ones that just speaking and not really came to do. And this is something that influences in the chapter also now, as we know, uh, who are the chapter's member that can be a project leaders, uh, who are the one that we can trust and give them a responsibility, and who are the chapters members that are better in doing specific work and not taking a lot of responsibility and big budget. Of course that we got uh, a new members and uh, even two of our uh, board members, uh, Yael and Shani, uh, came after Wikimedia and became also a board member, so it's influence of the chapters members and also the board members. Uh, we learn a lot, yeah, I don't need to expand about how Wikimedia uh, teach you about your organization and how to, to run a big uh, conference. Uh, we contact with a lot of uh, supplier and contractors. Uh, some of them are still working with us uh, until today, every time that we are running conference or big event, we're connecting with them and they are happy to come and work with us again. We are still getting positive response from people and the truth that last month when I contact a director for a big uh, advertising company in Israel and I asked him if he can help us with the 
Hebrew Wikipedia 10th anniversary that we had last month. And if you didn't saw the video that we did with Channel 2, you can go to our YouTube channel and see it. It's, I think it's a great project. Anyway, when I asked him if he can help and start to explain about Wikimedia Israel, so he stopped me and said, you are not the one that uh, ran the conference of Wikipedia in Haifa two years ago. So also two years after, people are still remember the conference. And what always makes me happy is the, also the, the movement remember what we did in Haifa and we're still getting a, a positive response. <laughs> what also we learn? That Wikimedia is a great opportunity, but also a, a great possibility of failure. Uh, some of us in Wikimedia Israel already have experience in running uh, big uh, events, handling big budget, handling media and press. But still, uh, Wikimedia is a very unique conference that you are not really uh, know how to handle until you're really doing that. Uh, it's involved, first of all, a very big budget for a small chapter that's running the conference and also a lot of volunteers, a lot of uh, suppliers, a lot of visa and attendance from around the world. And you're trying to do everything with the basic cost. And it's something that's really unique for the, the Wikimania conference. And all these things make the Wikimania conference a, a very dangerous produ uh, production. And we are happy that we succeed, but we are also uh, afraid that we are going to fail and the group is going to split and we're going to have a problem to, to make the conference that we dream of. The budget issue is not something that I want to really speak about, but it's really obvious. A chapter that uh, going from a small budget to a very large budget, it's, you can say it's jumping and not growing. Instead of every year to go a little bit, you're suddenly jumping to uh, about, thousand, uh, sorry, about a million shekel uh, budget. What about after Wikimedia? So Wikimedia is a really hard task to do, and while you are uh, organizing Wikimedia, you stopping all the project that you have and trying to focus all your energy on Wikimedia. And after Wikimedia ends, the last thing that you want to hear or to see is your chapter member or to hear the, Wiki the, the word Wikimedia. You want to go and to rest for at least six months, uh, but you can't. You need to keep the momentum of the big conference that you had to keep the volunteers that came, all the publicity that you got, all the people that want to connect with your chapter that now they, they know that there are someone from Wikipedia in Israel that they can do a project with him. And this is what we really did in Israel. Uh, we didn't rest also, although that we really want, and start to do a project with big, big organization that spoke with us after uh, Wikimedia, like the National Library in Israel, the National Museum in Israel as part of the GLAM project and many other projects. Today, uh, it's important to say that uh, Wikimedia Israel didn't uh, establish before Wikimedia. There are chapters that established few months or few years before Wikimedia. Wikimedia Israel was running and running project for four uh, years before we uh, hosted Wikimedia. So Wikimedia influence of the chapter, but there are also other things that in influence the chapter, like the past experience that we had. Today our budget is about $2,100. Uh, uh, we are running thousands of projects with very big organizations in Israel, like I said, the National Library, National Museum, ministries, and a lot of cool projects. We have two staff members. One of them is the new, new executive director that will join us next month. Yeah, finally. And we're going to open an, uh, an office for the staff and for our volunteers to have a place to meet. And finally, I can put all the swag that I have in my car and my apartment in, in the office and not to, to take them everywhere. That's it. Thank you. I will just... I need to take a picture to post it on Facebook. So smile a little bit. Great. That's what Thank happened. you. That's what happened when the PR guy is also the head of the chapter. <laughs> yeah. What you shouldn't have noticed from Itzik's slide is first that Wikimedia Israel did not do the conference with staff or with an office. That's something that should be taken. Um, and before we continue to the panel, I want to invite, invite James Hare from Washington DC to talk about how Wikimania affected his chapter. Uh, 
good afternoon. I am James Hare, the president of Wikimedia District of Columbia, which is a regional Wikimedia chapter based in the mid-Atlantic of the United States, centered on Washington, DC. It is fair to say that Wikimedia 2012 is the one thing that caused our chapter to become a chapter. Now, in Washington, DC, there had been Wikipedia meetups for years. The first documented meetup in, in Washington was in 2005. Uh, there's, not a lot of, there's not a lot of documentation, but if you go to the meetup page, you can scroll down to the bottom and see, oh, there's the first one in 2005. So, that, so they've been doing them for a long time. I, I didn't come around for years, but basically, before we even considered bidding for Wikimania, we, we in DC had, we were building up an, a local meetup group with a lot of, a lot of attendance for our meetups, sometimes with meetups have, attracting as many as 60 people. So we have had some particularly successful meetups and we were in the beginning stages of organizing with institutions such as the Smithsonian Institution, which if you're not familiar with them, they are the most renowned cultural institution of the United States. So, so we had been in talks with them for years before Wikimania and we were trying to figure out what exactly our relationship with the, them would be. But the thing was, for all the early talk of Wikimedia DC forming a chapter, no one wanted to take the responsibility and say, I'll start the chapter, I'll go through the legal processes, I'll keep the books, I'll do the organizational work that's necessary to form what is essentially a corporation, a nonprofit organization. And there was simply not much interest in, in doing those kinds of things. However, in January of 2011, uh, we held our Wikipedia 10 celebration at the National Archives downtown. And one of the, during our lightning talks, um, I had proposed that uh, Washington DC would bid for Wikimania 2012, an idea which, which was very attractive to the people in the audience. We had about 100 people that day and they were very enthusiastic about the opportunity that Wikimania might be held in our city, this huge international conference. Now, now in DC, we're huge fans of international conferences. We, we host a good number of them, but holding Wikimania in DC after years of being a meetup group and holding our own things, we wanted to have Wikimania in our city, so we put together a bid, and as luck would have it, we were awarded the conference for 2012. And then came the issue. If Wikimania is a big conference that requires an organization to carry out, what organization is going to carry out the conference? The answer would be a Washington DC chapter. And so once we were awarded the bid, we came to the conclusion that, yeah, it's now time to get to work. And so, I think we were awarded the, chap the conference sometime in, in March or April of 2011. That's when we uh, got the email saying that it's ours. And we held our first board meeting as a chapter on May 7th, 2011. So just a couple months after being confirmed as the hosts of Wikimedia 2012, we were able to get a chapter off the ground. Now, while Itzik spoke of how Wikimania 2011 resonated across Israel as the huge Wikipedia event in Israel that created lasting, a lasting effect for Wikimedia Israel and really grew the chapter. I, I don't think Wikimedia DC exactly grew that way because we were in the stages of growing well before Wikimania, just that because we had the opportunity to host this conference, the Necess the necessity spurred us to become very serious and organized about it. So that's where Wikimania is very helpful for organizing a chapter. It really, it really makes you get down to business and put together an organization that can not only host the conference, but now that we're done with the conference, we are, we are engaged in many outreach activities. And in fact, the early talks we had with the Smithsonian have, have now evolved into a very positive and supporting relationship because we, we project a more professional image, even though we don't have staff, we still, we still come off as more formal. Like we are not just a group of Wikipedia enthusiasts, we are also a local nonprofit organization. 
And so, I, and so Wikimania made that possible, and it also, for if we want to expand our geographic scope from just our region to the U.S. as a whole, it really gave American Wikimedians the opportunity to not only go to a Wikimania for possibly the first time in their lives, but also to really come together as a country of Wikipedia editors. And so that, that's really the power of Wikimania. It, it brings together Wikipedia editors in a way that just going on the website and editing Wikipedia can't. So thank you. Okay, now we got to the panel, to the questions. Um, if you could turn on the lights, that would be good. I want to invite um, the panel members. First, Sue, Sue Gardner. Then I want to invite um, Itzik and James, who have spoken. Sorry, the guys. Yeah, just okay. sit down. And I want to invite two members who haven't spoken yet. Oh, sorry. James Forrester, who, whose official title is Perpetual Wikimanian. We've been to all Wikimania and has helped the jury in selecting most of them. No, it's okay. I have no idea what you just did. Okay, it works. And Manuel Schneider, also a perpetual Wikimanias, but also the guys who knows the most about the technical aspects of all Wikimanias, the Wi-Fi's, and personally in charge of the technology of at least two or three of them. Oh, that's good. You need your notebook. Okay, good. Now, um, they stand here? Or? Okay, I'll just stand here. Yeah. Uh, I, I want the panel to start with first questions um, about the general shape of the, of, the, of the conference. Should it become bigger or smaller, taking in mind the growth of the community and the, the nature of the conference? And I think it would be better if we just start in order, starting with Sue and going to Manuel. Sure. So I'm going to assume, Daror, unless you say otherwise, that you want us to speak relatively briefly because there's a lot of questions yeah, yeah. for a lot of us. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I've certainly heard it argued um, in the past that the conference should be small enough to retain a certain level of intimacy, but I didn't feel that the larger ones have suffered. I mean, I'd be really interested to know what the other folks um, think, but I haven't felt like the big Wikimania has suffered at all. I kind of feel like the more the merrier. It has been my own personal experience. I'm sure the same things like Sue said. I don't think that Wikimedia DC, that was the biggest conference that we had, really changed uh, my reaction to Wikimedia or my enjoy from the conference. I think the only question if it's the local team can handle a big conference because you want to handle, you, you're dreaming about 2,000 attendance conference, but you can handle uh, 500. So I think this was this is what need to be the. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, I find one of the great joys of Wikimania is that it is so big because everyone goes. Well, not truly everyone, but as close to everyone as we can get, but. If you, to strike a balance between the massiveness of Wikimania and a more intimate conference, I, I've noticed that one of the trends is that we're having more than just Wikimania each year. We have the Glam Camp, we have the Diversity Conference coming up in Berlin, we have educational conferences for educators and the like. So there's been this proliferation of topic-specific conferences which are very good in providing focused programs and a specific group of people talking about a specific issue. So I, so I don't think that limiting Wiki, the size of Wikimania is necessarily a direction that the conference needs to go in, but I do agree that small conferences are also great opportunities for Wikipedians to collaborate. So I'd say that um, when you're doing a 500 person conference, uh, the extra work for 2000 person conference is not four times as much work. And we're asking volunteers, organizers of Wikimania to put in an incredibly large amount of work. And we should probably get as much payoff for that work as possible rather than um, limit ourselves to be too small. Also, you know, 2,000 people is huge. It's larger than any Wikimania we've ever had. It's also um, something like 2% of the number of people who will edit Wikimedia, Wikimedia projects that month. Um, so, you know, if we really want to represent the community, we need to be as inclusive and as wide-ranging as possible and be
being too small uh, makes that very hard. I don't want to talk about size in uh, number of persons attending. I think what we should do maybe in Wikimania is, or with all the conferences we have, uh, create some kind of focus and create some goals because we have a lot of conferences and we have to see how they fit together so that we do not end up being the Wikimedia travel agency. I think that's its term, yes. right? Uh, may I borrow it? And so I have once uh, made some concept saying that we have this, we have, I see three layers actually, which you can divide <laughs> then vertically. But um, first of all, you have these regional meetups with the folks who are actually working on the projects. They were having like their beer or a chat or actually work on articles or do an excursion. You have a, a second layer of regional conferences which are based mostly on linguistic areas like the Iberocorp or the Wikicon in the German speaking area and so on. And then you have the international layer and here I currently see two competing conferences which are the Wikimedia conference, which is more about the organizational stuff, where staff members, board people are talking about the programs they are doing, let's say the serious stuff. And then you have, on the other hand, this awesome conference, Wikimania, where we also kind of want to give a reward to all the volunteers working on Wikipedia, come together, have fun, and obviously it gets mixed up a bit because if everyone takes this incredibly expensive flight to Hong Kong to get there. They also want to meet their chapter folks. They want to meet the, the hacking and developers guys. But I increasingly see a problem that, as most of us, we are several heads actually, that you can't attend all the stuff you actually want to or people staying back home actually expect you to attend because you should talk to the chapters people and you want to do some media wiki coding and you're giving like two talks and sitting on a panel and uh, try to help organizing next Wikimania. So I, I want just to maybe uh, invite you to have some focus or define some goals maybe to avoid this. That's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, no, I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, think, I think in relating to what, I hope this is on. I got the cool stuff. Um, in relating to what Manuel said, and we have seen that the number of tracks basically remained the same over the years, even though the number of people expanded. Uh, the past two years also, we had an academic track in nature. And my next question is about, again, the, the type of the conference. Should it be all inclusive, a developer's track, glam track? all kinds of track, should there be an academic track, should it become more academic or remain more a discussion, a society discussion phase? And each year we're trying to balance all these ideas, what do you think it should look like in the future? Um, so I, I don't think, um, and again, I'm not best placed to say, so I'm representing my personal opinion with seven years of attendance. I personally don't think it should become more academic. I think that's what conferences like Wikisim are for. I am always interested to see the academic um, presentations because research is inherently really, really interesting. Um, but I think, and here I'm gonna challenge, I think a little bit of what Manuel just said. I think we see things slightly differently about the difference between the, um, is it called the, Wiki, the Wikimania conference? And, uh, sorry, the Wikimedia, the Wikimedia conference Chef. Chef. And, and, and this conference. I don't see Wikimania as, as fun or a reward for people. I see it as where the individual practitioners come together, right? And so where I would draw a distinction between um, an academic conference, which is for the study of something, and a, a Wikimania type conference, which is for practitioners of that something. And so what I see when I come to Wikimania is a lot of conversations on different topics and with different you know, streams, different tracks, um, but a lot of conversations about the actual nuts and bolts of building the projects. 
I think that's why technology has always and continues to take um, a front seat at Wikimania, because those are the tools that people use with which to build the projects. So I think um, that having an academic component at Wikimania um, is great, right? But personally, I think it wants to lean towards being a place which is about the actual work of building encyclopedias and collaborative news and Wikisource and Wikibooks, et cetera. I don't think the Wikimedia need to be more academic, but I love what Dro did uh, when we hosted Wikimedia in Haifa. It's to dedicate it, uh, a special track for the academic presentation. We combine two conferences that uh, we combine another conference that we're holding in Israel every year. It's the Wikipedia Academy, and we combine it to Wikimedia. So people that want to hear academic session came to this specific track, and I think this is this is a good idea if we want to also to allow most of us to attend the, the regular Wikimedia as we know, and also to bring uh, people from outside to hear more academic sessions. Um, so I'm not completely familiar on the current state of Wikimedia scholarship, whether there's being 10 articles published a year or 100, but I think it's based, it should be based on how much demand there is to present on academic topics. If we only have a few academic presenters, then we can give them the tracks and that would work. Um, if it's an issue of there's serious demand for academics to present at Wikimania, then we should accommodate that as necessary. But I do, I do agree with Sue that there should be a balance because if you're someone like me who ran uh, bots on Wikipedia for several years and you wanted to present on those bots, it's not necessarily an academic topic, but it's still something of great interest to the community, especially to the people who are participated, who have participated in those things that the bot was responsible for maintaining. So I don't necessarily think it should become more academic, but it, the, conf the program should be put together based on what's available and what's good content, regardless of whether it has an academic sheen to it or not. Yeah, I'd say that we shouldn't try and reserve a track, a room for the entire conference just on the off chance that someone might have something semi-academic to say, but at the same time, just because it's academic doesn't mean that it isn't necessarily incredibly valuable for us to hear, and that we probably should be more blind to the source of um, uh, the presentation and not really mind one way or the other whether it's academic or not academic, and that we should foster better and stronger relationships with alternative venues for proper, serious, peer-reviewed, academic um, conference presentation of Wikimedia-related subjects, whether that's with Wikisim or something else. I found that when um, we co-hosted, as it were, or so co-located Wikisim and Wikimania in Gdansk in 2010, that seemed to be incredibly successful. Um, so it happened just before Wikimania, and so there was an opportunity for people to present both at both conferences and to give um, a different kind of presentation and on the same topic to different kinds of audiences, which I think is a much uh, more uh, successful and nurturing way of doing that than trying to shoehorn um, different kinds of content into the same conference. Yeah, I think there is a general line in all the answers, so I can <laughs> basically second this. Uh, yeah, I think the core of the conference should be the volunteers and the Wikimedia work, but we should keep our doors open to academic or any other topics that are interesting for our volunteers without becoming an academic or whatever conference. Um, okay, uh, ju just a note, when we're talking about an academic track, it doesn't mean it has to be a whole day or a whole, it can be just one session for the conference depending on what gets in. Um, I'm going to jump a bit on the question and merge two questions together before we go to the really difficult one. The question, mm. should the event be hosted by smaller chapters to allow their growth and development, or by bigger and well-founded chapter who are more experienced? And I want to merge this with the one before last. Should this event be run by chapters? Can we just allow groups who do not want to be a chapter um, uh, participate and run the event, uh, produce it? I'm going to give you, give you the questions as well to make it easier for you to see in this corner. <laughs> it's hard to hear with a lot going on. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
don't think everyone needs to answer each question. So no, if you don't have to answer yeah, And you know what, Tarot, I'm going to skip this one because there are people who are better experts at this, who've already spoken a little bit to it, who should speak more. Okay. You are one of those. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> You're next. <laughs> I need to think about, about the answer, so you can I'll start. I'll speak first. Speak. Um, first of all, do I think Wikimania should be produced exclusively by chapters? No, I do not. I think any organization that can competently pull off a Wikimania, in any sense of the term competent, should be able to do it. As long as they know how to keep all key stakeholders in the loop, but if they are competent, they'll know how to do that. I believe in 2007 it, or 2008, it was um, not done by a chapter, but by the Library of Alexandria. And as far as I can tell, I wasn't there, but I've heard it was successful. So that shows that you don't have to be a chapter to do it. As for a large chapter versus small chapter, they, do, they bring different things to the table. A large chapter brings in a lot, of, um, a lot of organizational expertise, especially on Wikimedia related matters. They probably can provide more financial support. And, they, and I have no doubt that a large chapter can execute a large, successful Wikimania conference. As for a small chapter, bear in mind I'm very biased here. So I, if you're going to have a small chapter organize Wikimania, they, they do need a lot of support and the Wikimedia Foundation has been instrumental in providing that support. But that doesn't mean large chapters don't need support. Any, ultimately, any organization that hosts Wikimania requires support. It's just a matter of what degree of support. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't recommend excluding small chapters because of a lack of infrastructure or whatever, because money can solve that. Um, I'll just jump in very quickly and say that um, uh, I don't think we should have a hard rule about whether or not you need a formal organization. <coughs> and uh, we've seen examples of running Wikimania without a formal organization existing beforehand, but also without one being created as part of the process, and that has worked. Um, and I think the question about big chapter versus small chapter or organization, whatever, um, uh, we, people should go in eyes open. They should know that if they don't already have infrastructure in place to help them, to help them uh, reach out to the media because they already have contacts there to help them run a budget because they already have accounting systems in place, then they're, uh, they're taking on more work. But that's a decision that the volunteers um, should be prepared to take on themselves rather than us try and create rules about what they are and aren't allowed to volunteer for. Um, obviously, as a kind of continuing committee of Wikimania, if we end up creating that, um, we should support and nurture people and advise them very strongly about that are you absolutely sure this is an awful lot more work than other chapters would be in that situation. But, you know, we need to support people in volunteering rather than tell them they can't. Um, Manuel? Well, I would, to answer that question, I would simply turn it around. I would say, what do you need to make a Wikimania? Mm -hmm. You need an awful lot of people who, are, who know what they are doing, who are enthusiastic about it, you need some money, you need some infrastructure, and then you can ask yourself if you have that, or if it would be helpful to ask your local chapter, or if the local chapter already has that and will happily provide it, or if you ask Wikimedia Foundation to give it to you, or if you have an external organization like the library who will provide all that for you, who will be the fiscal sponsor, can you do this by yourself? That's a question you should ask yourself if you want to do a Wikimania. And as long as you can do that and you have the stuff you need, you can do it, Wh whoever you are. Okay, I think so the, the interesting is the equality between uh, big chapters and small chapters or only uh, Wikipedians, uh, groups that want to run Wikimedia. And I thought about it because I remember the discussion that we had uh, about a year ago when we saw that uh, Wikimedia UK uh, talked about uh, uh, allocated a, a big amount of money just for the uh, preparation uh, for the, the bid itself. And some of us uh, thought that it's not fair for the small chapters that also want to, to run Wikimedia and don't really have the, the money and the budget and the staff to, to make a, a very uh, professional bid. And I think, I think it, there is a consensus here, I'm taking the liberty to answer part of the questions myself, that there, there's a consensus here that 
not, it not necessarily a chapter will do the, the, the any enthusiastic, large enthusi groups of enthusiasts can run Wikimania. And to the best of my knowledge, a large chapter have never attempted at running Wikimania. I think next year is going to be the first time. So far, it's, it's always been groups or small chapters. So you wanted to Yeah, and you know, some an observation that I would make, um, which I thought of as people were speaking, and I think is, is useful, is the question of big chapter, small chapter, chapter yes or no, it really isn't the, the, the important question, right? Just um, based on my observations of the seven Wikimanias that I've experienced and had some visibility into the planning of, I think what actually matters, or, or one factor that actually matters quite a bit is, is there an intact existing team of people who have experience working together on projects, you know? Because when teams first form, you know, they go through, I forget what the language is, the academic language around it, but storming, norming, something, performing. <laughs> Until they can perform, they have to do a bunch of other things. And um, I certainly saw, like with, with, with Haifa, it was clear, it's a, it's a small country, you had all known each other really well beforehand, you had experience staging multiple academies, et cetera. And so for you, it was a level up, but it was not, it was not, it was just a bigger, um, example of things that you had already done. And I think that the Wikimanias that have either had difficulty and been successful, or had, well, they've all actually been successful, but the Wikimedia, Wikimanias that have had the most difficulty getting off the ground have been the ones where they've started from zero, where there was a, only a very small number of people, or they did not know each other very well yet. And I think you can't really fast forward through that first couple months of like experience, and some of it was referred to in the decks, right? Who can you trust to get stuff done? Who meets their deadlines? How can we work together well? Blah, blah, blah. So I think the real question is, do they, does the team that is um, proposing to run Wikimania, do they have experience working together and creating events or any kind of projects together prior? Because that will accelerate them through a bunch of the prep work. I, I want I want to comment on that. To the best of my knowledge, all teams at one point hated each other, fought with each other, had great difficulties <laughs> amongst themselves, <laughs> and tried to kill each other at one point. And just, just talking about the last four years, I don't yep. know what happened before. Uh, I, I can deny that entirely. Wikimania 2006 was a dream. Sam and I and Delphine, <laughs> Phoebe <laughs> never <laughs> screamed or shouted at any Everyone of us. Everyone knows that sounds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I want to relate to the third question. Uh, the question of more profes professionalization. If you hire a good production company that does a lot of the professional work for you, can a smaller team do it? Or do you actually need a good professional team? I think the more, the higher the level of the conference, people expect more of you the next year. So it becomes a necessity now to hire a company. I don't think you can go back on that one. What do, what do you think on, on this aspect? I think it's very easy. Uh, you for skipped Sue's turn, by the way, unless she wants to do the round again. What? It was Sue's turn to speak. Ah, I'm oh, sorry. I'll get, it's okay. Woman it's first. okay. I will go swiftly. Um, yeah, a couple of observations I would make about things that have changed over the years, and I think they've changed for the better, is I think the last couple of Wikimanias have all hired a professional project manager, which I think is critical, right? Like the, that there be one person for whom it's their top priority. They don't, everything else gets pushed behind. I think that really matters. Um, and I also think that, uh, that um, the Wikimedia Foundation is offering a different kind of support more recently than we had in previous years. I think we've all gotten a little bit smarter over the years about how to work together well. Now, Israel uniquely, Haifa needed very little support from the Wikimedia Foundation for whatever awesome reason, right? Um, but I think that we are a little bit better equipped now to understand where we should offer help to the local teams and where we should let them run and do their own thing. Um, and so I think, I think that helps too, the fact that we're a bit sharper about roles and responsibilities than we probably used to be. What I started to say, it's we can make the, the conference more about volunteers and we can also make it happen in the same uh, country every year and it's going to be much more easier every year to handle the conference and also cheaper for the movement because if we are, uh, Wikimedia Haifa for, for example is going to handle, next Wikimedia is going to be probably cheaper the cost per, per attendance uh, as we already familiar what to do. Uh, but we want to give the opportunity, the opportunity opportunity to other uh, chapters and groups to do it. And I don't think that we need to make it more professional. We need to get, uh, as Sue said, 
a support for professional, but not to hire uh, expensive uh, uh, production company. And I'm really happy about what uh, Sue said, that finally, I think it was supposed to be a, a few uh, years ago uh, already, that we have uh, someone in, in the foundation that can support the groups, and Ali is here, I think so. Yeah, Say right. hi to Ali. Uh. <laughs> and finally, we have a person that can support the groups every year and to share uh, uh, the knowledge that we uh, learn every year. Uh, instead of starting from the beginning and just jumping to help the group uh, three months uh, before the conference when we see that they are uh, about to fail or uh, didn't uh, arrange the conference uh, uh, good enough. Uh, so the, the question from my point of view is to, to keep the balance between volunteers and professionals. So if Wikimania 2012 hadn't hired a conference planner to help execute the conference, it would not have happened. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's necessarily a small chapter versus large chapter thing. Even the German chapter would have had to hire a conference planner because it's simply a rule of event planning. And you could argue that for each Wikimania, a conference planner would have either been necessary or would have made it better than they already were. And so I, so I have no doubt that if you really want to do it right, you should hire a local planner. And also, I do think the foundation has a role in centralizing some very specific tasks so that the local team doesn't have to do more work than is necessary. So this seems to be about hiring and centralizing things. And there is some truth in it. But I would say, uh, Going back to what we actually need, I mean, yes, we need somebody who has uh, the, the expertise to make sure that the things get done. This does not necessarily be someone that is hired, but I acknowledge that given the size of the conference and the things, that the number of things that needs to be done and the time period that needs to be covered, I mean, we are now uh, planning for roughly one year that most people won't have the time to do this as a volunteer. So that might, so we might end up hiring someone. And of course, we might end up hi uh, hiring or outsourcing certain services. We just find out that we won't be able to cover or do ourselves. And uh, the centralizing obviously makes sense. Uh, <laughs> I, I could tell a lot of stories about this. Um, I would be would be happy if we would have centralized a few things or even earlier. But I want to emphasize a, a, diff, a, a challenge I see here because I've, I've been volunteer on several Wikimanias and most of the time I, I feel like I try to be a volunteer but actually not getting really through to the teams and being sad in the end, mm -hmm. seeing that things I would have liked to do actually haven't been done, even though I've offered them. Uh, and I guess that the challenge uh, here is that there are these local teams having their own vision, being very enthusiastic about it. And yeah, and I just want to get their Wikimania done their way. And this is a problem also with hiring people and especially a problem with, with centralizing. That we need to centralize and we need to hire people, but we have to keep in mind that the wiki, maybe this is a Wikimedian thing because we maybe all are kind of nerds or something, <laughs> but that, that we are very picky about this. We don't want other people telling us how we should do things and this can, even for volunteers, sometimes be really frustrating. No? No. I'll go to this one. Um, I want to add one thing that may be not clear. Um, hiring a professional team costs money, but most of the time you hire the professional team when you don't have enough money because they are the ones who are able to raise the money to do it. That's what happened in Haifa. Mm -hmm. when, we couldn't, when we lost most of the sponsorships, that was the phase when we brought the production company in and told them that their we money... We brought a logistic company, no, uh, not a production company. Yeah? Logistic company... Not a production company. Logistic. Logistic company. I couldn't hear you. 
they had to raise a large chunk of the money that they got eventually, which gave them a, a good motive to raise a large sum of money. So it actually saved money for the conference. I, I want to go back to, we, now that we are facing the two difficult questions, that's the remaining of the panel. The first one is about the budget. How should we handle larger, smaller budgets? This was a big issue in choosing next year Wikimania, the budget question, and um, I have on this panel three of the jury members who chose, who was in the choosing team of uh, London. Well, actually, two jury and one moderator, to be precise. And there were serious discussion about the budget up to a point that there was a question whether none of the team actually would have won the bid at a certain stage. Um, so, I, I, okay, I, I want to ask the, the forum what they think on the question of budget. And while they do that, think of the next question is about the choosing of the next Wikimania. There is a question about the central areas against more remote areas and the, how the choosing location, should, the choosing process should be done. That would be the next question. And then we will open it if we have time for the audience for questions. Okay, oh. so you want us to speak to both, Dora? Yeah? Uh, first the budget, then do, we'll do this. this. But separately then, yeah. okay. Um, you know yeah. what, we, we, we can, can do both together. Them. Okay, <laughs> I can combine, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand the rules. We can do both together, yes. Okay. So, yeah, on the question of budget, um, I actually think budget is the wrong way to understand the issue, right? Because something can be expensive and poor or expensive and good, right? Um, but if budget is really code for or what kind of conference do we want to have, I think that's a terrific question, right? And I think that... Um, I, I used to, when I explained to people what Wikimania was, I used to say things like, it's kind of like a student conference. And what I meant by that was, everybody is wearing t-shirts and shorts and the food probably isn't gonna be great, but it's a lot of fun, right? Um, and uh, I think that um, we want it to be a conference that's accessible to everybody, right? I think that that's the most important part. People come to Wikimania from all over the world. Um, their currency buys more or less relative to the currency of the country that Wikimania is in. For a lot of people, travel is their biggest expenditure for everybody. It's their biggest expenditure, and not everybody gets scholarships, right? So I think we want people, we want it to be accessible to people, and we want it to also feel accessible to people. So I don't think it ever wants to be a thing with glittering cocktail parties and, you know, stretch limousines and so forth. I will say that the Library of Congress um, was a lot of fun to see all of us um, dressed as well as we possibly could be. Um, but it is also an institution of learning, which made it feel okay. It was not a glamorous environment, it was a serious environment. Um, and I think, I think, you know, we, we, we will start getting uncomfortable when and if we find ourselves in two-tiered land, right, where different levels of access, special privileges, if cash buys you special privileges, that's going to start make us, making us uncomfortable. Um, the kinds of people who we see ourselves attracting will make us feel more or less uncomfortable, right? Um, but I think that the bottom line is that it wants to be accessible to everybody. That's the point. Um, if I can interject briefly on the two-tiered thing, uh, one of the one of the hallmarks of the Library of Congress event was that we we abandoned our original idea of having a separate attendee party and VIP party because we realized it was not logistically feasible. So we combined the two. We we got the fancy dress of the VIP party and the togetherness of the attendee party and made it one party so that ambassadors could hobnob with Wikipedia editors. So I we will skipped the ethic, by the way, unless you... Oh. Okay. Okay, James. Okay, no. I was just going to say that um, I thought Doral's slides earlier about budget were excellent, but they missed a very important part of the budget, which is the uh, cost to the people in this room, the cost right. to the people outside in the other the venues. The cost of Wikimedia um, uh, attendees is about five to six times the cost of the conference. Hmm. Sometimes it's 10 times that if you have a cheap conference. That doesn't mean the conference has cost less. It means it's cost the foundation less because other people have spent more necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, if we have a conference in Australia, that will add very approximately a thousand US dollars to every attendee. Uh, that just means that the cost of running Wikimania in Sydney as opposed to uh, San Francisco is another million dollars for a thousand person conference. 
that doesn't mean that we shouldn't go to Sydney, but it means that there is money, uh, there is a real cost to doing something in a more expensive city, not just um, the cost to uh, can we get the venue cheap, can we get the food, can we get the hotel, uh, but can we actually support um, community members? And every person who spends $2,000 of their own money to come to Wikimania is not, you know, spending that $2,000 going to the Caribbean and lying on the sand and enjoying themselves. They're spending $2,000 as a donation, a donation of their time, but a donation of their, their hard-earned money to support Wikimania and to make Wikimania better. Every year, every person that comes is supporting Wikimania, and we need to remember that the budget um, includes their cost as well as ours. And so um, I think talking about a $300,000 conference versus a $500,000 conference, when we're actually talking about a 2.4 versus a $2.6 million conference, is probably missing the point. Mm. Yeah, uh, thank you, James, because that was exactly, I think, one of the most important points, and something the jury has in the last years also uh, try to take care of. Uh, but there was also another discussion. Um, you can have a great conference uh, with by raising more money and doing more fancy things, but then there is, uh, I still see a certain limit where you can say, okay, it might be possible to raise another 200,000 US dollars to whatever, get a, a great party and an even greater venue and do some crazy stuff no other Wikimania ever has done. But at some point you might say, okay, this is an overall limit we simply don't want to spend. I mean, even if we were able to raise the money, mm -hmm. then we want to pay back the amount the Wikimedia Foundation is giving in and so on, but we don't want to just like waste the money or uh, use the money just because we have and we can and we can make the want to make the greatest conference ever because it's not n not a good use of money i mean is it a good idea like if somebody gives us a million of dollars just to make a, a glamorous conference is that a good idea or should we say no we as the wikimedia movement we want to have a, a proper a nice conference but we are not going just to spend all that money to show how great we are actually are or something like that. Uh, SJ, we will have time for questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah, here. Um, you, you didn't relate to the choosing process, and I know it's a difficult <laughs> question and a big question yeah, that's been discussed it. now. Um, if you permit me, I want to ask a different question. <laughs> um, this last year, very few team actually bid it, and even fewer jury member actually wanted to be on the jury. It w the selection of the jury was very difficult last year. Um, do you have any idea why is that? Uh, can, you don't have to answer the question if you don't want to, but any of the panel? Oh, nobody on the panel wants I, to answer I the think, questions. I think it's fairly obvious. I think it's because it's daunting, right? It's a lot of work and everybody acknowledges that it's a lot of work and I think at the end of it you get a lot of love, you know, and your organization might get some acceleration. Um, but it's just a ton of work and I'm guessing, right, so you guys correct me because some of you did it, right, but I would guess that it's, it's not so much the work that's a deterrence but it's the risk of failure, the risk of, of letting down the movement would be pretty, that would feel pretty fraught, I think. No? <laughs> Well articulated. So, I, yeah, I, um, running Wikimania is stressful because you've got three and a half, you know, thousand eyes going to be looking at you from outside, from an inside an auditorium when you say hello and welcome to Wikimania, and they will be judging you. They will be judging you because they just slept in a bed or in a field last night. They will be judging you because they were met or were not met at the airport last night. They would be judging you because. The conference the because the Wi-Fi doesn't work, <laughs> and they want—they're looking at you because they can't look at their laptop. They're judging you because, um, uh, for many different reasons, and um, uh, you know, you stay awake at night thinking about the eyes staring back at you from the rest of the conference hall. What have you done for me? And that is stressful to run Wikimania, but it's also stressful just to bid. And and I don't think we give enough credit to the people that do fantastic work putting together a bid. Um, Doing a, a serious proper bid for Wikimania is a huge amount of work. Um, 
we kind of jokingly model ourselves on the International Olympic Committee for selecting Olympics each year. And those are budgets with hundreds of people and millions of dollars and many years of practice and even they fail. And we kind of treat it like the, oh yeah, we did a bid and it didn't work out, so we'll bid next year. And the amount of emotional work to put a bid together is really high. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not at all surprising that um, some years uh, we have fewer bids than others and we should support them in that. On the jury side, um, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard saying no to people and, and judging people. And I don't like doing it and I've been running them since the start, basically, so yeah. Um, I'm not sure how grounded in reality this is, but this is mostly conjecture. I think what causes the bids to decrease in some years compared to others is the sense of inevitability. Uh, for instance, the bids for 2014 were London and Arusha in Tanzania. And my perspective is that I don't think anyone wanted to compete with London because it's London. <laughs> Come on. Which have lost no, three, I years think in a, three years before. I've shown that yeah, London have lost the years. It was their People time. finally said that's the time for them to also Kimenia, so let's step down. Um, I think. Oh, wait, Manuel, yeah. You wanted to speak? No? Okay. Uh, well, my personal opinion. Oh, I have two mics. My personal opinion. Um, first of all, I've tried when every, whenever you give a lecture in Wikimania, you always have a hidden agenda. And my hidden agenda is quite obvious from the questions and the choosing of the team on stage is that, and showing the two presentations before that by James and Itzik, and I thank you, uh, is that every team that's enthusiastic enough can do Wikimania, and almost every big city in the world has the facilities to host Wikimania. So it's only a matter of enthusiasm and being bold, which is the motto of Wikimania, uh, of Wikipedia. Uh, I think there's mics for questions for the audience. <coughs> yes, yes, there are. Yeah, <coughs> so I, I saw several questions. Let's start with Phoebe and then SJ. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you have no other forum in which to ask questions of anyone. <laughs> and if you just state if you want to address one certain jury member or just sure. the general audience. Yeah, Present yeah, yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Phoebe Ayers. For those who don't know me, I have uh, been to all the Wikimanias and helped run seven of them. So I, <laughs> I have opinions. But <laughs> my question is for the audience. I know of many people in this audience, uh, but I don't know everyone. And I'm wondering how many people have run a conference or event, a Wikipedia event of any kind. Not Wikimania, but like any kind of event. OK. It's like <laughs> much more than half the room, right? And so my question for everyone, um, but the panel, is how can Wikimania support smaller events and how can we learn from smaller events for Wikimania? What's, do you see the relationship there? I it's a question for the panel. I, I, I yeah. want to say that yeah. everybody who raised their hands, if they were actually active in doing a Wikimedia event, can do Wikimania. That's yeah. my answer for, the, for your question, but let's have any of the jury members, I, I would any say of the that panel members. Wikimania is, is um, part of a continuum of Wikimedia events. It's not, it's not like there is Wikimania and oh yeah, there's some other events but they're not the same kind of thing. Um, a meetup that you run every week, every month, every year, that is part of Wikimania. Wikimania is a spirit of coming together, of celebrating Wikimedia, of sharing knowledge, of learning from each other, hopefully of having some fun, but also of making improvements for our projects. And um, Every time you meet another Wikimedian in real life, that's Wikimania. And we shouldn't get so het up about the, oh wow, the big annual conference. It, you should get involved, you should um, participate, you should have fun, says James from the Happy Sundance Party. <laughs> okay, uh, you want to answer, Manuel? Yeah, I, I would say um, running a regional event is a perfect preparation for Wikimania especially if it's not just a small meetup, but maybe, like I said, these three layers, if you have like uh, uh, this regional uh, conference in your linguistic area, you might also end up with having some people from outside your country coming in, uh, maybe uh, with uh, one, 200 people. So I think this is a perfect preparation that because you will start doing the things you also need for Wikimania, like 
partner up with uh, the venue, with the library, with some other organizations, finding sponsors, these things. And maybe I can go back, jump back to the last question Draw asked about the number of bids and people being involved in Wikimania declining or uh, wanting to do Wikimania. And I think uh, what we must help is, is make it, making it easier and uh, yeah, empower people to do that. Um, I think you said it, every big city in the world basically could host uh, Wikimania. And I think this is what, that's how we should focus in the bidding process also. We shouldn't ask uh, people to write brochures and booklets about the touristic attractions of their city and spending days in improving and uh, making videos and so on. They should focus on the team, on the infrastructure they have and the things they need to do and just a simple checklist and provide this and provide their mission. Something, a, a Wikimedia bit should be easy. I mean, they should, instead of writing a bit for four weeks, I mean, after closing the bit, we give them four weeks to improve the bits. So it's even more than four weeks they actually spend in writing them. These four or more weeks should be spent in talking to people and getting people on board and maybe a few hours spent in submitting the actual form in the end. What, what Manuel is saying, we've discussed this before the session, to make a simple form, you should just fill it in and send it and that would be enough to bid for the first stage. Because the, the basic questions are really simple. Do you have a room this size, yes or no? And if you do, then you can do it. Um, the next question was SJ, do you have a mic? Okay. So, I like the last two things that James said about how the real cost of an event is, is more like a couple million dollars from across the movement. And how when people meet and get together, they're all doing the essential, ask the essential bit of Wikimania, which is having a great, inspiring social discussion with a dozen people about something that you otherwise do asynchronously online. And my question is, what would be involved in running a Wikimania that wasn't tied to a geography? Where you didn't ask people to spend 80% of what everyone was spending on jet fuel and hotel rooms, but you made something really wonderful and beautiful and similarly inspiring for people who, con who contributed from anywhere and wanted that experience without necessarily being in the same room. Are you talking about Wikimania Second Life? <laughs> yes. I think he's talking about Wikimania on a cruise ship, actually. Uh, but um, so kind Air of um, telepresence systems, like immersive systems. So you go into one room and you're actually in three rooms, one in London, one in Hong Kong, and one in New York. And you can um, participate freely and back and forth. And it doesn't really matter which of those three rooms they're sitting in so that you can have a track about technology and a track about language and a track about, and everyone can share without having to travel around the world, um, sounds wonderful. And the moment we get that technology, uh, we should do that. But every conference I've been to which tries that um, doesn't really work as well. And so what you end up doing is forcing uh, geography limitations on what you can talk about. So the London one will talk about these three things and then they will share back and forth their learnings that, you know, people will do a best of presentation back and forth. Um, also, requiring people to be in at three in the morning is less fun for a conference. Um, uh, but I would really love to share more openly with less travel and more engagement across the world. That sounds wonderful and we should try everything we can to do that better. Even if we have the technology, I will don't like the idea because Wikimedia, it's not only for the session, it's also to meet uh, your friends, to meet the people, to hang out in the, the break and to speak and to think about projects, to share things, things that you can do when you are in a virtual room and see a session. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Itzik and I think that, that when we talk about travel costs, it was what was talked about, it's always the travel cost from San Francisco to Sydney, Australia. But think about it, those who live in Sydney, Australia, and in all the Indonesia area, Southeast Asia, do not come to San Francisco because it costs too much. Those who, the fact is that most volunteers now live in Europe and the US does not, does not mean we should have the conference only in these areas. 
if we do not bring them to other parts of the world where we do not have volunteers now, there will not be volunteers there. I did hear a person from the foundation saying we should not do the conference in South Africa areas because there are only eight Wikipedians in the whole, the entire continent, or 80 Wikipedians in the entire continent. It's a question, should we bring everybody there hoping other Wikipedians would come? Or if we do not bring the conference there, would Wikipedians ever come to that part of the world? And I don't, I don't know if, if anybody has the answer to that. Does anybody have a question? I see a question here. And okay. We, we can actually one afford one more. I think it's the last this question. This will be the last one. Um, okay. Hi, I'm One Mark. Um, many people on the panel actually know me. Uh, I did bid for Montreal for 2011, the only losing bid you didn't mention. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and it's interesting what you just said because it's actually part of, I think, why we lost the bid, is that we wanted to make it a bigger event in an, in an area where there aren't that many volunteers to do outreach to make ourselves visible, to be on the media, to bring in more people. And I think that um, Wikimedia is up to date and I've attended a number of them and I've been here and I love it, but I think we have this nasty tendency of being parochial, uh, of turning in into ourselves rather than using this opportunity, this moment where, hey, look, all these people are getting together to work on this great thing Come and see us, come and join us. We are, we're here, use the opportunity. And, and this is something that goes back to what you were saying about why would we go to South Africa if there's only eight editors? Because then people would see us, would see what we do, would see what we're bringing to the world. And so my question is to the panel is, shouldn't we use, uh, shouldn't we avoid looking inwards and try and use Wikimania as an outreach, as a, additional visibility for the movement in places where we go. I don't think we have much time for a full session, so maybe just one panel member. One, two, um, two? Sure, yeah. Um, I, think, I think we should, right? I mean, I think we should. I think we do. Um, I think we have, uh, we've waffled around a fair bit on how outreach-oriented um, Wikimania should be, and I think DC was probably the most outreach oriented. I mean, just by virtue of the fact that there was such a large, um, there was such a large participation among people who I think lots of them had not edited much, right? Um, so yeah, so we've waffled around a little bit on how much it should be used for outreach. Um, I think a question is outreach to whom, right? Which I think is in part what Doror was alluding to a minute ago, right? If, it, if to the extent that it is an outreach tool, we can target who that outreach is for, who are we trying to r attract, who are we trying to retain, could be a consideration in terms of where the conference um, takes place. Yeah, uh, in Israel, for example, out of 700 uh, participants, 300 was people that come outside of the movement, they are, wasn't Wikipedians. And you ask me if I will be happy if more people that come in outside of the, the movement will come to the conference, of course, of yes. But we need to remember that what people from outside of the movement are uh, interested it's different from what the people here are interested in because to have session like ask the developers or uh, about visual editor, uh, the future of Wikimedia and coolest uh, project in uh, the Wikimedia movement, it's something for person outside of the movement, it's not really interesting in. I'm not sure about the coolest projects. I think that would something that would interest also people from outside the movement. So you wanted to. I was just gonna. I was just gonna add. Yeah. I mean, what Isaac said. What Isaac said is obviously true, right? And I think. I think the very fact of. So. So two things. One thing is we've struggled with how outreach oriented to make the program, right? Over the years, we're not sure. We don't know. We've discussed having a separate outreach track, <clears throat> and we've discussed a number of things. I know that. Um, we had some consultants, some anthropologists at Wikimania in DC. They felt like we didn't collectively do a great job of speaking to newcomers in a way that was helpful to them. There's nothing in that that's intended to be critical of DC or the local team. I think we've all always not done a great job of that, right? So we need to think about, if that's important to us, how do we do it better? 
Um, but I also think just the mere fact of having Wikimania in a city, the media come, awareness grows, more people are exposed to us, they see us as more real, they start to think about who are the people behind that encyclopedia I use every day, right? I think we saw the seeds of that in Egypt. I think that the uh, global ed program that the Wikimedia Foundation does is doing very, very, very well in Egypt. And I, I, I attribute that in part to the seeds that were sown in Alexandria years earlier, right? People start thinking about us differently when they start hearing about us in their local media. And the Wikimania in Alexandria was also where the seeds of the glam movement were, mm -hmm. were dropped because it was, it was in Egypt where Liam Wyatt, who before then was just a Wikipedia editor, he, he um, participated in this program with, um, it was the Library of Alexandria, mm -hmm. and they were like, okay, we have an audience with a Wikipedia editor, let's ask him questions. And it was from there that Liam became the Wikipedian in residence at the National Archives in Britain, and from there created a whole movement that has resulted in many, many Wikipedians in residence throughout the world. So, and that all started with Wikimania. Likewise, with Wikimania 2012, we reached out to a number of different institutions. We had the National Archives and Records Administration, which we were already partners with, but the partnership got even stronger after that. Um, but as for general outreach to individuals who could potentially become new editors, there are perennial proposals for having uh, Wikipedia workshops as a track during Wikimania. It's like, it's a great idea, but okay, what is your plan for carrying it out? What, what are you going, what is your exact strategy to ensure that you have this room and you have this person teaching it? Who is going to teach it? Can you get them for all three days? What is gonna be the subject matter? What specific audience of people are you going to appeal to? And to date, it hasn't really been a thing in Wikimania's lexicon. It's because Wikimania was created as a community conference for the community to celebrate its work. And so I think a next step for Wikimania is determining how do we, how do we fine tune it so that it becomes a, how does it fulfill its full potential of being a true outreach event in addition to being the ultimate community event? Okay, I think we ran out of time. I want to thank the panel members. This is the, yes. <laughs> um, the, the, just one last word. These issues have been spoken about in mailing lists throughout the past year. There is a mailing list, I'm not sure if it's the right one, called Wikimania L. You know, the one people said, I've lost my code, have you seen it? I'm going out to the train station, I didn't see it. The one, you can use it all year round to discuss things and aspects relating to Wikimania, and that would be one of the places to have this discussion with a more Most general Most of the audience. time we're asking what about the videos from the conference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, thank you.